Hi, and welcome to your next lecture in Computer Science for Everyone. Let's talk about if statements. For now, we've said that code runs sequentially. This means it starts at the beginning, and it gets to the end, and then when that happens, the program finishes, and that's it. But, of course, this is not actually true, because then your programs would have to be really large to actually do something useful. So, what we can do is we can branch out, we can do something depending on something else. So, what we can do is, for example, if the user presses Alt F4, you exit the program. If they don't press Alt F4, then you don't do anything. So, this is what I call branching out, and this is why we use if statements. So, an if statement is, as in the first bullet point, if something is true, we do something else. So, in order to see whether something is true or false, we have comparisons, as we've said um, in a previous section. So, comparisons are valued to true or false, and here is a table of comparisons. We have quite a few comparisons, but they are fairly simple, uh, and, and most of them you will know already. We've seen that to assign a value to a variable, we use, for example, int age equals 5. To compare two values, we use two equal signs. So in this case, equals equals actually means it's asking the computer whether something equals something else. In our example, 5 equals equals 5 evaluates to true because 5 has the same value as 5. The next operator is less than, and it's just the uh, a crocodile clip that's facing to the left. I'm sure most of us are familiar with this. Greater than is the opposite one. Less than or equal to is the less than sign and an equal sign after that. And 5 less than or equal to 5 evaluates to true because although 5 is not less than 5, it is equal to 5. Greater than or equal to is the opposite crocodile clip plus the equal sign. So in this case, 7 greater than or equal to 5 is true because 7 is not equal to 5, but it is greater than 5. Not equal to is an exclamation mark followed by an equal sign. So in this case, 4 is not equal to 5. This evaluates to true, because 4 is different than 5. And, of course, the exclamation mark therefore means um, not. So the exclamation mark inverts the uh, comparison. If false is false, then not false is true. So as we can see in the example, exclamation mark false is the same thing as true. Let's take a look at how we could program this. So in the next video, we can actually go through in the programming environment and try. If something is true, we do something. So we have the keyword if as part of the Java language. And then between two brackets, we have the comparison, or in this case, the true keyword. And then between two curly braces, we do whatever we want to do if the if statement is true. So here we could have if user has pressed Alt F4, exit. So the if user has pressed Alt F4 would be in the beginning, and then exit would be between the two curly braces. We can change this true to something else. We can be doing something like if 5 is less than 10, we do something. 5 is always less than 10, so technically this and the previous slide would be the same thing. We can change the 10 to be a variable instead of just a value there. So we create a variable, an integer variable called x, and then we substitute that for the 10. We could obviously change the value of x, and then depending on which value of x we choose, the if statement would execute or not. So if we change the x to be 3 instead of 10, then 5 is not less than 3, and so we wouldn't run whatever we had inside the if statement. So anything that would be inside the curly braces wouldn't run, because 5 is not less than 3. In this case, however, 5 is less than 10, so we would run the if statement. Similarly, we can change the 5 for a different variable. In this case, we create a variable y and give it the value 5, and then we put it there. In this case, still, the if statement would run because 5 is less than 10, y is less than x. If we were to choose the value of y, asking the user for a value, like we've seen in the previous um, presentation, then we could have a lot more variation. We could ask the user, give me a value. And then if the value is less than 10, we could 
do something, and if not, we could not do it. So if the user gave us a value 11, we wouldn't do anything. If the user gave us a value 9, we would do something. We can do something if something is true, or we can do something else if that is not true. So going back to our code, we can actually append something at the end of this that will say, if this comparison failed, we do something else. And indeed, the keyword for this is the else keyword. So if y is less than x, we do something else, open new curly braces, we do something else. This um, kind of makes sense until now, but another thing we can do is chain if statements. So we can actually say if, oh sorry, I pressed one too many. If y is less than x, we do something. If that is not true, we do this if this is true. So if y is less than x, we do something else. If y is equal to x, we do something else. Or else we do something totally different. So in this case, we would do something if y is less than x. Something else if x is equal to y. And finally, something totally different if y is greater than x. And we can keep chaining if statements like so. So here, for example, if x is 99, we do something else. Um, and then something if all of the above are false, we do something else. So if, x, if y is not less than x, if x is not equal to y, if x is not equal to 99, then we do the else statement. We can chain as many as we want. So we have seen how to split the flow of the program by using if do something if the comparison is true, if else, do something if the comparison is true, or something else if the comparison isn't true, if, else, if, else, do something if the comparison is true, something else if a different comparison is true, or something different if both are false. So hopefully this wasn't too confusing. I suggest you watch the following video where we will go into the programming environment and try to program some if statements and see where they lead us to and hopefully clear out any doubts you might have. So I'll see you in the next video and until then.